I, I say they're a bunch of cheaters and we, we lynch them. The Minecrafter Dream, a real name Clay, is one of the biggest online creators of all time, amassing tens of millions of fans. But despite being a family-friendly gaming channel, he has still been inundated with controversy after controversy. But why is this the case? Well, today, we'll find out. The earliest example of public backlash against Dream came after his initial traction. He made waves following a series of videos about PewDiePie. The then most subscribed to YouTuber began a Let's Play that renewed Minecraft's popularity. What needs to be understood is that, any time a player uploads a new save file of Minecraft, the entire game world is randomly generated. However, different seeds can be created in order to create specific layouts for the game. Because of this, fans became interested in finding the seed to generate a copy of PewDiePie's world. Dream uploaded several videos about this, with each gaining millions of views. This was in part due to the sheer level of effort put into the process. The first was published published on July 14th, 2019, and the second just four days later. In that time span, he gained over 40,000 subscribers. He would upload a finale the next day, with a minute-long video simply titled, Here's PewDiePie's Minecraft Seed. It promoted his Twitter, where he released the seed to wide fanfare. Unbeknownst to him, however, PewDiePie had reservations. If others were able to explore his world, it could lead to the series being ruined. Part of the fun came from his reaction to discovering new structures and locations, but now it was possible for people to spoil it. He expressed this later that day, stating he wouldn't release his world until after beating the game. In response, the relatively small dream received an influx of criticism for ignoring Felix's wishes. Because of this, he unlisted the video and uploaded an apology to PewDiePie. But this came off as half-hearted. It also promoted a server he'd created for the public to explore the world called PewDiePie Museum. So some fans rejected him for being an attention seeker. I'm sure he had good intentions, but there is no way he didn't consider the consequences. He knew, but went ahead with it anyway. In my opinion, it seems like an awful thing to do for recognition or attention, because no one will remember him in the days to come, even if spoilers end up ruining the series. Little did they know that Dream would become one of the fastest growing channels on the entire platform shortly thereafter. Though his popularity is a recent phenomena, the Dream channel dates as far back as 2014. Back then, his sense of humor was much less tame. For example, MLG Cooking with Bad Boy Halo, which was uploaded on November 1st, 2015. This video includes gags such as an edit of the Ku Klux Klan, and even an appearance from Osama Bin Laden. That continued into his Let's Plays. As seen in the satirical, everything in Minecraft 1.15 leaked. He jokes about several features, including a riff on vegans being disabled, and the idea of playing as a black man. They added a new skin variation. You may have noticed my hand. This is very interesting. We have Steve for guys, and we have Alex for girls. But they just recently added Tyrone. His audience at the time loved his sense of offensive humor. But as he grew in popularity, that increasingly became an issue. The first example of this was in January of 2020. That month, one of Dream's associates was called out for saying an offensive slur for mentally disabled people that starts with an R and ends with the letter D, and has E-T-A-R in the middle. They refused to apologize, resulting in the drama escalating to a full-fledged cancellation. In response, Dream stuck up for his friend in a series of tweets. When was the last time you saw someone with an actual mental problem get offended by the word more than any other insult? What about dumb or idiot, both of which used to be medical terms? You guys don't care about the actual difficulties people with disabilities face. All people do is make a fuss to make themselves look like a better person. They use the struggle of people that actually have disabilities for their own reputation. I disagree that it's a slur. If I thought it was a slur, I would think it's horrible to use it, just like other slurs. I don't think it's any more of a slur than calling someone obese. Many people responded by insisting it was a slur, which he adamantly fought the notion of. This marked a far different point in Dream's career. He was more willing to stake out a position and go against his audience, and it's not hard to see why. 
Even back then, it reached the point of absurdity, like when people got offended over him naming items penis. But this changed after the creation of Dream SMP, where he experienced massive growth. It was only then that he began to capitulate more and more to his viewership. This is evident in his response to a similar controversy later that year. In July, Dream conducted an event where he declared war on the other players. This meant setting off bombs in their city of Lemanburg. In the midst, a donation asked Dream for a celebrity war cry, to which he obliged. Ah! Wait, 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 go, go, get up, 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 get Many of his viewers found this offensive, likening it to the sound used to mock Native Americans. Dream initially stood his ground, writing a long thread countering their arguments. He pointed out it wasn't a concept exclusive to their culture, and that he had Native American in his blood. If you're offended, f off. Literally could care less. It's not offensive and don't be a baby. Get off my account if you want to critique people having fun in a block game. It's not education. War cries are across every race, sexual orientation, and creed. This did little to subside the mob, who became even more inflammatory. Because of this, he was forced to address it again later that day while on stream. There, he softened his stance and once again clarified it was unintentional. I woke up and the first thing I see is people messaging me telling me to kill myself and that I'm a horrible person, I'm a racist and all this stuff from us yesterday during the war stream doing a war cry whenever somebody donated to me and said do a war cry and obviously I, I have no intention to do that and I had I had no intention to do that I was referencing and I think that both Saftap and George when I asked them they thought the same exact thing um Spongebob and that I'm sorry to anybody who we offended by doing the the war cry yesterday I just got a donation saying do a war cry we did it and had no intention to offend anybody um I just that was the first thing I thought of and it was Related to Spongebob is what I thought. I'm sure that the, the boys just copied me. This was received much better, winning back many fans who praised his maturity. It perhaps showed Dream there was a better response to the offended. As in October, he went so far as to write a twit longer relitigating all of his drama. Here, he took time to address and apologize for near minuscule controversies. The first and most recent was about an offhand remark he made about another creator's fidget spinner. He also apologized for reposting a meme years prior calling Minecraft villagers slaves. In regards to the R-word incident, he explained that his previous defense came from a place of ignorance. He wrote that he didn't use the word himself, and defended it out of habit as it was commonly used by gamers. In the time since, he'd been educated on how it evolved into a neurodivergent slur. On the war cry, he reiterated that he responded very poorly. He then claimed to have become more in touch with the Native American side of his family, which made him a better person. There was a formula to his subsequent responses. Rather than ever fight back, he just profusely apologize and claim to be educated, then vow it would never happen again. Two months later, Dream was called out for a comment from the Minecraft Championship. In reference to people finding loopholes to achieve faster times, he said, I, I say they're a bunch of cheaters and we, we lynch them. I, I do agree they should be banned. His use of the term lynching was criticized for having racist connotations. In a thread with over 10,000 likes, one user wrote, I understand the lighthearted tone, but the word lynching is not the right word to use, ever, especially when joking. This word carries a lot of weight in the black community. They then explain the history of lynching in the US. In response, Dream said he regretted using the word instantly. He was attempting to reference witch hunts. Then he confirmed it had been taken out of his vocabulary. This happened again after he referenced the Washington Redskins while playing GeoGuessr. Dream once again profusely apologized, pled ignorance, and claimed to have been educated. Um. When I was playing uh, GeoGuessr, I, I, I read a license plate of a football team from the NFL that changed their name because it was uh, uh, insensitive. Um, but I, I, I had no idea about like the history behind it or anything. So 
Um, I'm sorry for saying it, I won't say it again. With how careful he became, it's no surprise his catalog prior to 2019 was deleted. But that didn't stop people from digging through them anyway to throw his past back in his face. Using the Wayback Machine, they compiled many of the aforementioned edgy jokes. They also discovered he used to be a Trump supporter. These facts went viral on social media several times, and Dream was forced to apologize for them over and over again. In May of 2022, he finally released a statement addressing the totality of his past, referring to it as the elephant in the room. It is upsetting seeing clips that I've removed long ago being brought up because obviously they were removed for a reason. But like I've also talked about many times before, that's going to happen unfortunately. I've done racist things. I've done bigoted things. I've never done anything with the intent to harm someone, but I've definitely harmed groups of people without caring or without understanding the effects my words or actions could have on that group. What struggles they have to deal with on a daily basis and how me as a teenager didn't care enough to understand that or realize that I was adding to the hatefulness in the world. In the end, it was clear his willingness to atone was enough to keep the adoration of those who'd once react with disgust. That meant even privating a collab with Minecraft creator Notch to appease a leftist streamer Hassan Piker. With that, there is still one incident left to discuss. In March of 2021, several clips of a Minecraft player with the name Dream began circulating. They showed the individual saying racial slurs several times. Bop, bop, <laughs> It was presumed by many that this had to be him, due to both the name and their voices, but it was quickly debunked by the original uploader himself. The Dream account, as it turns out, had passed hands several times, with the YouTuber only purchasing it in 2019. Because of this, it was undeniable that he was completely innocent, though it continues to resurface every now and then. So with that, the dream controversies would continue on, and we'll learn about the rest after a brief word from our sponsor. Some things in life are just objectively, undeniably cool. Jetpacks, Bruce Lee, and one-shotting a heavily armored mech from the other side of the map with a giant sniper rifle. Mech Arena is a fast-paced PvP mech shooter with competitive mayhem for everyone. Choose from dozens of weapons and mechs with special abilities for endless combinations. Fight with friends or compete in a global arena of players, maps, and modes. And when you're ready, you can take on the world in the most explosive, fun, and chaotic sport the future has to offer, Mech Arena. There are plenty of different playstyles to choose from, including sniping. The long arm is the first sniper rifle you'll get. It comes in three sizes, so fit the biggest ones you can on your mech and you're good to go. And might I add that you cover to duck in and out as you take the shots. Don't miss their April event, which introduces the exclusive Helix Rack 10 weapon and gives players a shot at picking up the legendary Gate Crasher mech and Railgun 12 weapon, as well as the Killer Clown skin for the Panther. Next up is the Cyber Riot event, where 5v5 deathmatches play out on 2v2 size maps. The event also brings the Fragment Gun, a futuristic shotgun that melts mechs like butter, new implants to go along with it, and a chance to earn the classic Shotgun 8 weapon. Use my personal link or scan my QR code to get bonuses worth $30. We are talking about one Rocket Mortar 6, one Amateur Crate, and one Skin. This truly is a fun game, and I advise everyone watching try Mech Arena. By this point, Dream's fanbase had gotten out of control. His channel grew from half a million subscribers by the end of 2019 to 15 million a year later. This massive influx consisted of mostly younger viewers, who often expressed a cult-like adoration for him. The sheer level of attachment and outspokenness was almost unheard of for a YouTuber. They dominated social media, to the point that dream-related hashtags trended every other week. But rather than maintain distance as others in his position had done before, he controversially chose to engage, sparking the career-long debate that he enabled his fanbase's toxicity. The first signs of this issue began in the middle of 2020. That summer, Mojang hosted a live stream to announce various events and updates to Minecraft. 
This included hosting a vote that invited the community to decide which creature should be added to the game. The three candidates were the Moo Bloom, the Iso Lodger, and the Glowing Squid. Immediately, fans felt the latter was easily the worst. The others at least interacted with their environment, while glow squids were otherwise mechanically identical to regular squids. That's not glowing. That's just having a texture unimpacted by light levels. You see this over here? This is glowstone, worthy of the glow in its name. Glow squid, you make a mockery of the word glow. But Dream disagreed. Taking a particular liking to the mob, he tweeted, I will follow people who have proven they voted for Glow Squid. This received over 50,000 likes, launching a campaign that only grew as he continued sharing the poll. Before long, other creators such as Mr. Beast joined in, explicitly stating he was asked by Dream to vote. In the end, their effort was a success. The Glow Squid won, barely etching over second place by 2.1%. It was the first flexing of his influence, uplifting the underdog through sheer reach alone. Of course, his decision wasn't received well by much of the Minecraft community. They began criticizing the streamer for brigading, even begging Mojang to conduct a revote. In response, Dream mocked them while pointing out he was only one of many advocating his preference. The only difference was that he had a much, much, much larger platform. But as time went on, his view became less dismissive as he realized it wasn't just about the glow squid itself. The concern was over the mobilization of his audience by promising to interact with them which felt irresponsible. Because of this, he would ultimately issue an apology a few months later. This is one that I didn't realize was as serious as it was made out to be. I took it too far and I regret that, but I didn't have evil intentions. This is just another learning experience as I realize now that there's just some things you should be really careful about using your influence for and especially how you use it. I regret saying that I would follow people and even really campaigning for the squid. It was just a dumb joke that got out of hand. The question of if a Dream had an inappropriate relationship with his audience was already starting to recur, but it would become more contentious as an even bigger obsessive subset developed. Originating from an Eminem song, stands is a term used to define an excessively enthusiastic and devoted fan. They are characterized by their unhealthy parasocial attachment to creators. For Dream, his stands began as strange but otherwise harmless accounts tracking his every move. For example, manually documenting his Spotify activity or cataloging whenever he fell asleep. But this quickly escalated to the extreme, as they became more and more fixated on the SMP. Before long, they began shipping members of the friend group, regardless of their age. That disturbingly included Dream's underage sister who was just 14. Then began the inappropriate images, with art produced of the YouTubers dismembered and tortured for pleasure. Many began to rely on them for their own happiness. They adopted the creator's personalities into their self-diagnosed disassociative identity disorder identifying as dream gender and dream sexual. Others became obsessed with demystifying dream, to the point of invading his privacy. They were allured by his mystique, able to project whatever they wanted onto him. But this only led them to become engrossed with affirming their imagination. His stands attempted to uncover where he lived, his real name, and his family. It got to the point that he had to digitally paint over the reflection of his cat's eyes in photos to avoid being seen. This was so widespread, it was celebrated when he showed a little of his neck, hands, or eyes. And naturally, their loyalty meant nothing was off the table when their favorite YouTuber was slighted. Crazed fans flooded the mentions of anyone criticizing Dream with harassment, death threats, and occasionally even doxes. In March of 2021, former Cartoon Network voice actor Nicholas Contu made fun of Dream's merchandise by saying it was for nerds. In response, they began mocking his dead dog, leaving replies like, Rocco is decomposing six feet underground as we speak. Please worry about that. In other cases, they drew hate art against the creator even depicting one critic penetrating their mutilated dead cat. While all of these examples are clearly on the extreme end, they paint a picture of how Dream's audience was perceived by others, and it was evident that he needed to address Stan culture firmly. He understood this, as in the beginning that was exactly what he did. 
In June of 2020, several large Minecraft creators started a spreadsheet to document toxic fans in the community. This was done so that these creators knew which users to block in order to remove troublesome people from their audiences. Dream was the largest creator to participate, which led him to become infamous for blocking stands. In July, he wrote a thread pushing back on the constant pressure to capitulate. But just a month after the block list, he would back down from the decision and even apologize to those that he blocked. It seems that at some point, he began to shy away from disavowing stands as a whole. To his credit, that didn't mean excusing the depths of depravity. He continued to call out targeted harassment, as well as artwork of minors or people who didn't consent. But it meant further enabling those with still unhealthy parasocial attachment to him. And that became apparent as tension continued to rise. On December 6, 2020, a Twitch streamer by the name of Josh took a hard stance against the fanbase. The thread received over 17,000 likes, which was enough traction to catch the attention of Dream. In response to the criticism of both his audience and conduct, he replied, You're an idiot. This quickly ratioed the original post, with his audience rallied around him for support. Josh would point out he didn't make an argument, stating it proved he was as immature as his child viewers and his bandwagoning friends. Dream responded, just because you think you have a thousand IQ because you passed middle school English doesn't make you any better than the rest of us. Never argue with an idiot. They will drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. Feel free to read my tweets for how I feel though. The tweets in question would outline his position on stands going forward. In his first post, he defined stands as a group of people trying to meet other people with similar interests while expressing this interest through shared morals, love, and creativity. He then argues it wasn't weird for people to obsess over him by comparing it to the adoration of athletes by sports fans. You just don't like the same thing as them, and that's okay. Don't use the crime of the few to punish the many. Finally, to cheer the stands up, Dream posted a minute-long voice memo. Uh, I I just woke up, so I hope I don't sound too bad, but I just wanted to put it out here that I love you and I care about you and that it will be okay. And um, I know that probably doesn't mean much to people who don't already follow me or um, look up to me or anything, but um, truly, you know, I have your back and uh, I'm, I, my heart goes out to you know, all people of color that follow me and, um, and that don't and uh, everybody who's been a victim of racism or discrimination or just horrible injustices. Dream later uploaded an eight minute long video to his extras channel elaborating on the arguments made before. This is likely where he intended to conclude his thoughts on the subject. But just three weeks later, Stan culture would once again become the focus of conversation. On December 28th, popular creators Ludwig and Jay Schlad uploaded videos warning viewers not to view them as friends. Unsurprisingly, Dream took issue with this message and adopted the opposite position. He tweeted from his private account, Love has many different meanings. Obviously, no creator can love their fans in the same way that they love their family or their best friends, but that doesn't mean they can't express love and care for them all. I can say that I love kittens, even if I've not personally interacted with every kitten. I've interacted with enough to know that I have a lot of care and affection for all of them. If I'm told about a kitten being hurt or going through something tough, my heart can hurt. I genuinely love and care about you guys, and that's the best way I can describe it. You are like a whole bunch of kittens, and I love you. Not every creator will feel the same as me, and that's fine but I'm being genuine every time I say it. I love you and I care about you. The comments were flooded with fans replying that they loved him back, which accumulated hundreds of likes. They even began drawing fan art of themselves as his kittens and meowed for him. But as the post spread beyond his audience, others took issue with this phrasing. Specifically, many found the term kittens creepy, likening it to stereotypes of online groomers. One creator named John Swan remarked, I'm not implying anything degenerate, but it's just super strange to me. He's encouraging the parasocial relationship that he has with his fans extremely weird. This backlash forced Stream to clarify that it was just an analogy that he chose because he owned a cat. I can't say anything without people taking it out of context nowadays. It was an analogy, people. 
In the end, Dream's culpability in this issue is nuanced. Many have accused him of endorsing it wholesale, which is factually untrue. But he's gradually lightened his stance on parasocial relationships. It's one thing to find it harmless, it's another to indulge by saying you love them. Though Dream would justify this by stating he's an empath, most agree it's irresponsible to encourage that facade. Some would even argue the toxicity is only a natural consequence of Stan culture. But, despite all the backlash, he remained ardent in their defense, even in the face of callouts and viral hashtags. In March of 2022, Dream posted a tweet specifically defending toxic shippers. He wrote, All these people that hate on my community for having toxic shippers, like, I am the toxic shipper. It's me. I joke about shipping myself with my friends. When someone pointed out that toxic shipping was ambiguous, he clarified that this excluded the fantasization of minors. In response, a Twitter user quote tweeted him with, This is so embarrassing. If I ever get famous and become like this, put a bullet between my eyes. Dream replied, That would require you to have a personality other than spreading hate on the internet, you dweeb. Unlike most of his interactions, this surprisingly backfired. As onlookers pointed out, he was arguing with a person named BallsLover32. Later that year, Dream announced he would be releasing an exclusive wristband that also acted as a USB. It contained pictures of himself as a baby as well as old childhood emails. This once again sparked up debate, with Jaws even tweeting, Terminally online people show just how disconnected they are from real life, thinking this is a normal thing to buy or sell. It seems that for as long as Dream remains popular, he'll continue engaging in what many feel is a questionable relationship with his fans. And it appears unlikely this conversation will stop in the foreseeable future. For his entire YouTube career, Dream's claim to fame were his Minecraft challenge videos. Fans flocked to his content to see him and his friends compete or mess around in the popular sandbox game. In the early days, Dream even frequently hyped himself up as the best Minecraft player in the world. And, out of all the various gameplay styles to choose from, a particular favorite of Dream's was the speedrun. What must be understood is that in order to complete Minecraft, players must reach an area known as the End and defeat an enemy called the Ender Dragon. In order to access the End, they must first find a certain type of item. Ender Pearls, with which they can craft the 12 eyes of Ender necessary to open a portal to the finale. In a game with as much random generation as Minecraft, it should be no surprise to learn that this has proven to be a frustrating challenge to those who wish to reach the end as quickly as possible. Dream was no exception to this, as he live-streamed himself repeatedly trying to achieve a record-setting time. His name even charted on the leaderboards more than once. In June of 2020, Minecraft Java Edition was updated to version 1.16. With this new renovation came a few changes to how the game functioned. Among these were the addition of piglins, a new type of creature which would give players random items in exchange for gold. Speedrunners took note of one item in particular, Ender Pearls, which had a drop rate of just 4.7%. Piglin trading quickly became a strategy for runners, and the 1.16 version of Minecraft received its own category on the leaderboards to account for this new method of resource farming. While there were many speedrunners who enjoyed this update, others hated it, stating that piglin trading had simply made the act of resource hunting more tedious and luck-dependent. This included Dream, who vented his frustration to friends over Discord. As fate would have it though, this luck would soon turn around. In October, Dream returned to live-streaming his Minecraft speedruns with a newfound sense of purpose. He began blasting through the game with a quickness he had never exhibited prior. After just a week, he had achieved a new personal best time of 19 minutes and 25 seconds. One of the major factors that contributed to this victory was piglin trading, as Dream found himself receiving the necessary ender pearls at an incredibly lucky rate. As some would soon speculate, perhaps too lucky. 
A fellow Minecraft speedrunner by the name of Eric saw Dream's incredible fortune and became suspicious. He observed the amount of ender pearls the streamer had received from the piglins and ran his own calculation for the odds of such an event occurring. A week later, he posted his findings on Twitter, concluding that Dream had gained Ender Pearls at a rate of 15.41%, a far cry from the 4.7% drop rate that was programmed into the game. Once this was made public, the moderators of the Minecraft speedrunning leaderboards jumped into action in order to confirm Eric's calculations. After a couple months of research, crunching the numbers, and consulting Dream for any information he could provide, they finally reached a conclusion in December. They published their findings in the form of both an academic paper and a YouTube video, confirming their belief that Dream likely manipulated the variables in order to give himself a better time. In fact, their findings weren't strictly related to the drop rates of Ender Pearls either. The moderators determined that his luck finding Blaze Powder, another necessary component for crafting Eyes of Ender, was also far greater than it should have been. Their final verdict was that the odds of any streamer having that kind of fortune, be they dream or otherwise, was 1 in 7.5 trillion. With their verdict passed, the moderators then removed Dream's score from the rankings. Almost immediately after the information went live, the internet began weighing in on their opinions on the matter. Dream already had his critics long before this event, and many jumped on the opportunity to take him down a peg. As for the YouTuber himself, he did not take these allegations lying down. He went to Twitter and began ranting about how unfair the entire investigation had been, accusing the moderators of being biased against him, and stating they had only posted the video for clickbait. In addition to this, he also made the claim that multiple moderators had reached out privately to tell him that the entire operation had been completely bogus. This heated public reaction only served to fan the flames of discourse, as Dream Stans harassed all who accused him of cheating. Around a week later, Dream posted a YouTube video in order to address the allegations. Two, the odds are wrong. I hired a professional statistician with a PhD that is an active astrophysicist to write an analysis, and I'll be going over parts of that analysis today. To dispute the findings of the speedrun moderators, the streamer had hired someone who he claimed to be an astrophysicist from Harvard University to double-check the math. The anonymous academic had agreed to help under the condition that Dream publish his work even if it still proved him to be a cheater. The main crux of the argument was that the moderators had only taken data from Dream's six luckiest live streams from that time period, disregarding the other five in which the drop rates for Ender Pearls had not been so high. According to his expert, with all this taken into account, there was, quote, no statistically significant evidence that Dream was modifying the probabilities. The researcher also determined that the odds of 1 in 7.5 trillion that the moderators had come up with was off by about 7.49999 trillion. On top of this, the professional gamer also continued his effort to undermine the qualifications of the people who had published the initial report. While he stated that he regretted how he came across in his original tweets, he still felt that their investigation had not been fair. Not only had they allegedly disregarded his less lucky speedruns when making their calculations, but they had also taken only 10 of Minecraft's random factors into account. While they claimed that this had been done in an effort to give Dream the best chance possible, he argued the opposite, stating that it was done in either a deliberate or subconscious effort to make him look bad. The YouTuber also cited the fact that, in their video, the moderators had claimed Dream was unable to show them any mods he had downloaded onto his game, due to the fact that he allegedly regularly deleted the contents of those folders from his computer. He fought back against this, stating he had fully cooperated with the investigation. Even the moderators could not refute this, posting a correction in the description of their video and appearing in Dream's upload to apologize. Dream also doubled down on his suspicion of bias from the investigators. His main piece of evidence was that the speedrun moderators for the Bedrock edition of Minecraft had banned him before any accusations of him cheating in the Java edition had ever been made public. 
In fact, Dream had never even submitted any scores to the Bedrock Edition leaderboards. On top of this, he also displayed Discord screenshots, apparently showing the team verifying the authenticity of his speedruns. All of this was used as evidence as to why Dream believed he had not received a fair appraisal. The publication of this video only served to create more discourse and disagreement. While those who supported Dream saw it as undeniable proof of his innocence, there were many others who were skeptical. First of all, there were elements of this upload that were not entirely truthful. The speedrunners claimed that he had been banned from the Bedrock Edition leaderboard simply because they didn't like him was proven to be untrue. Not only had the ban occurred after the initial accusations were made, but their rules clearly stated that no players who had been caught cheating in any edition of Minecraft were allowed to submit scores. On top of this, the credentials of the expert Dream had hired were called into question. The fact he remained anonymous caused many to cast doubt on his findings as a whole, and those who were skilled at math found his calculations dubious. The speedrun moderators ultimately stood by their results and maintained the ban. A little while after this, the Harvard astrophysicist would publish a new paper, this time reaching the conclusion that, quote, The probabilities were almost certainly modified, and this provides very strong evidence that Dream cheated. Dream then deleted his own video. The situation would lie dormant for a while after this, with many assuming the drama was over. That was until May of 2021, when another of his speedruns had been removed from leaderboards because it possessed questionable aspects. This was when Dream posted a twit longer addressing the old allegations of cheating. Bizarrely, he mentioned that his statement, which was over 2,000 words long and was the response to the biggest controversy of his career at that point, was written in the bathtub. However, he did not deny it this time. He instead explained that he had previously installed a mod to his game that increased the spawn rates of ender pearls and blaze power in order to expedite the process of making his regular challenge videos on YouTube. While he claims to have never intended to use this mod during his speedruns, he had accidentally live-streamed with the enhancement still enabled. Since he regularly swapped out the contents of his Minecraft mods folder, he claimed it was sometimes difficult to keep track of which ones were active at any given time. Dream also posted a second twit longer a few days later, apologizing to the Java Edition speedrun moderators for any harassment they may have received from his fanbase, and to the speedrun community as a whole for the way he handled himself throughout the ordeal. This confession once again started the firestorm of backlash. Many onlookers doubted Dream's explanation, stating that he had only made a partial admission of guilt since his back was up against the wall. They doubted how someone with so much experience in Minecraft could make such a seemingly obvious mistake. Even if he was telling the truth, critics argued that he was at the very least guilty of extreme negligence. Dream did not comment on the situation further, seemingly wanting to leave this whole affair behind him. Once people had said their piece and made their jokes, the drama had once again subsided. In an interesting twist of fate, a year after all of this happened, another similar scandal would unfold. Eric, the speedrunner who had exposed Dream in the first place, was accused of manipulating the probability of his games in a very similar manner. Even though one story had concluded, the cycle of dishonesty in the speedrun community was seemingly never-ending. John Swan was a YouTuber on the rise in the early 2020s. His commentary videos giving insight into other creators on the platform were highly praised for his presentation and thorough research. He was well respected by both his viewers and peers, and quickly gained himself many friends in the commentary community. Yes, he was viewed as a trustworthy source of information by all who knew him. In his own words, he could not be cancelled. Well, that is, until he crossed paths with Dream. It all started in February of 2021, when John posted a clip from a podcast on Twitter in which Dream discussed his early rise to fame. The commentary YouTuber apparently didn't care for his attitude, referring to the Minecraft streamer as a douchebag. This tweet began making the rounds online until a screenshot of it finally ended up on Reddit. As people commented their thoughts, one user stood out from the rest, Dream. As it turned out, the professional gamer also had opinions about John Swan. 
According to him, a couple years prior, the two had called on Discord in order to conduct an interview for a Minecraft-related documentary. After the fact, John had allegedly changed his Discord username and profile picture to resemble Dream, and began messaging several of his fans and friends under the guise of the SMP creator. These messages reportedly included sexually explicit material and racial slurs. When he was confronted about this, John claimed he had nothing to do with it, and that his Discord account had been taken over by a friend. Despite the fact that this comment was left on a relatively small subreddit and didn't receive much attention at the time it was posted, it still managed to catch the eye of John Swan. He went to Twitter in order to refute Dream's testimony, and his explanation for what really happened was interesting to say the least. As he told the story, he had been visiting some family friends around a year prior, and one of their younger children was curious about a career in online entertainment. Since he didn't have a computer with him, John chose to log into his Discord account on the kid's laptop in order to show him what conversations between professional YouTubers look like. After the fact, he went home without remembering to log out of the device. This was when the child discovered the conversation with Dream and used the information to impersonate the Minecraft megastar. John believed that Dream was trying to twist the tale, as the whole thing had already been explained in private. He also included a statement from Harley TBS, the YouTuber who had first told Dream about what was going on, claiming that he now believed John's version of events. Dream, however, wasn't buying it. He showed a screenshot of the DM conversation in which he initially confronted Swan about what was going on. At a glance, these messages appeared to corroborate the story that the commentator had been telling the entire time, as John expressed confusion since he had been unable to log into Discord for a while. Dream had one simple question though. How did John know that the impersonation was taking place on Discord when that detail had not yet been mentioned? Despite this logical inconsistency, the commentary community at large rushed to the defense of John Swan. Many of them had known him for a long time at that point, and did not believe the story sounded like something he would do. One of Swan's most ardent supporters was Nicholas Diorio, who lambasted Dream for, as he put it, playing the victim. Diorio was one of the most prominent figures in that sphere of YouTube at the time, and had publicly been close friends with John for quite a while. All this being said though, not everyone was in agreement. There were some who thought John's story had too many holes to be believable. Even if his tale was true, they wondered why he would make such a large public spectacle out of something so small. Of this crowd, none were more vocal than Keemstar. The Minecraft YouTuber Dream is getting criticism and hate right now, and it's unjustly and it's unfair because Dream is the actual victim in this situation. Let me explain. The Drama Alert host went to Twitter to declare Dream's innocence and disparage the fans of the commentary community who he believed were just blindly parodying the opinions of the people they followed. This take obviously didn't go over well with his colleagues, but Keem stood his ground. Just a couple days later, on February 16th, Keemstar posted an episode of Drama Alert in which he interviewed Dream about the debacle. Guys, today we have a debate with the YouTuber Dream versus John Swan. However, uh, right before this debate was about to happen, right when we were about to record, John Swan backed out. At the beginning of the video, Keem revealed that it was originally supposed to be a debate between the two feuding YouTubers, but John Swan had backed out at the last minute as his manager had advised him to wait and make his own statement on the matter. This was because earlier that day, Dream had conducted a live stream in which he presented several of his own points in order to prove his side of the story. John had apparently been caught off guard by this, and decided it best not to go on Keemstar's platform while at such a disadvantage. In both this interview and his live stream, Dream gave several more reasons as to why he suspected John to be lying. His main point of argument was the language used by the alleged hacker in the offending messages. The Minecraft speedrunner pointed out that this supposed 12-year-old child had a surprisingly in-depth knowledge of the commentary community and YouTube's terms of service. Not only that, but he noticed many similarities between the particular word choices of the hacker and John Swan's normal style of speaking. This interview really didn't change anyone's mind, though. 
Those on John's side of the argument fully supported his decision not to go on drama alert, as they believed Keemstar to be biased against him. About a week later, John Swan published a long document as his official and supposedly final response to the drama. He stated that he chose this route rather than making a video about it since he didn't want to monetize the situation or drag it out any longer than need be. He claimed that he no longer believed Dream was acting maliciously, but the alleged falsehoods he was spreading still needed to be corrected. One of the main points he took issue with was Dream's assertion that the child was supposedly just 12 years of age. John refuted this, claiming he never said how old the boy was, only that he used, quote, 12-year-old humor. Once this document was released, most assumed this was the end of it. Both sides had said their piece and had expressed a desire for the whole thing to end. But nobody could have anticipated what would happen next. It was just a few days later that John's good friend Nicholas Diorio posted on Twitter claiming that his opinion on the entire matter had flipped. As previously stated, Diorio had been one of the loudest voices in Swan's favor, so this was a major development. As it happened, in the time following the publication of the paper, a lot had occurred behind the scenes. Screenshots had begun to spread amongst the commentary community on John Swan apparently confessing to the whole ordeal to another YouTuber named The Right Opinion a year prior long before this firestorm had even started. When these images reached Diorio, he immediately called his friend in order to verify the information. Despite being confronted with evidence seemingly proving his guilt, John did not confess at this point. Instead, he spent the call waffling back and forth between maintaining his innocence and making vague statements. Okay, I'm just I'm just asking because I want to know. Because like I feel like I already know the answer. So it's like really, like there's no reason to lie to me. If you know the answer, then you know the answer. So you did it! That's what I'm gonna say. I, I, I... John, knows. come on! I'm not... No, I'm not... I don't know. Who knows? Once both parties realized that the conversation was going nowhere, the call was ended in frustration. However, it didn't take long for John to realize the jig was up. He soon deleted all of his tweets attacking Dream and released a full confession. He revealed that about a year prior, he and a friend named Lieutenant Cobra had been messing around on Discord. Since they already had access to Dream's username and profile picture, they decided it would be funny to impersonate the gamer and send people the most absurd things they could think of. When he was confronted about this, John had panicked and made up the story about the child taking over his account. The Reddit comment had only driven him into more of a frenzy, causing him to double down on his lie and digging his hole deeper. He ended his statement by apologizing both to Dream and to everyone who had defended him over the past couple weeks, and stated he would be removing himself from the internet for the time being. To put it mildly, this apology was not well received. While Dream accepted it and chose to move on, John's former allies were still outraged. Many of them had heard the confrontation between him and Diorio, and noted his very different tones between his public and private statements. Many of them believed he sounded shameless when he was caught red-handed. There was a shared sense of betrayal felt throughout the commentary community. Boblax, a creator who has made many videos about being on the spectrum, said that he felt used by Swan, who had allegedly picked his brain in order to better sell his story that the kid who hacked his account was autistic. But the one most hurt by all of this was Nicholas Diorio. He had been John's loudest defender, had championed his initial rise to YouTube success, and had considered him a close friend, only to be stabbed in the back. John Swan eventually returned to the internet, but his videos now only receive a small fraction of the viewership they once did. His final interaction with Dream was completely one-sided. In response to his confession of cheating, John uploaded a video titled, I Empathize with Dream. He attempts to draw similarities between their respective outings. It went ignored beyond mockery from former friends, and has since been removed. It appears that, in John's attempt to harm Dream's credibility, the only one who got destroyed was him.
For years, Dream's MS Paint avatar was the only official representation of himself. This led the crudely drawn face to become iconic, later becoming depicted as a mask in fan art, first in live action skits and eventually with a song simply titled Mask. Published in May of 2021, it uses the veil of an allegory for masking as normal in everyday life. You see, the singer suffered from ADHD, and as a result, always felt like he didn't belong. This was not the first time Dream had created music. While his work was praised by the most loyal fans, it rarely escaped his community. That was the same for Mask at first, until a month later when he premiered an official animated music video for the song. Within the first two days, the video garnered over 3.6 million views. It went viral, but not for the reasons Dream would have hoped. It had become popular to mock Mask, from its animation to its contrived themes. Many criticized what they felt was potentially harmful messaging. For example, Dream is shown in the video throwing away his normal pills, based upon his own experiences. However, because it was made so vague, many argued it was anti-medication. Hey Dream, what's the message behind throwing out the normal pills and basically implying that if you have a mental illness, do not seek medical help because it's bad? Really weird message to say f medication for any form of mental illness, basically. In response, Dream tweeted, Mom, wake up, the new Dream controversy just dropped. He then mocked the critics. They really be like, he visualized his own experience as a kid with ADHD and medication for it. Disgusting. But songs that go, drugs, drugs, ayo, turn that shit up, Charles. Unfortunately, this response only made people more upset with him. Many felt that last sentence was trivializing rap music and began calling him, yet again, a racist. He attempted to quell this by assuring fans. I listen to rap too. People linking me saying drugs with music notes around it to rap music are off. Pretty much all music nowadays talks about drugs. The point isn't that weird. It's that art is art and experience is experience, even if you don't like it. But that user wouldn't take well to being ratioed. They privately messaged Dream, claiming that his fan base was anti-black, manipulating them and making them feel unsafe. Then they demanded a personal public apology. Because of this, Dream deleted his reply, but clarified that he didn't agree that his audience was racist. They replied, You may not agree, but it's the truth. That's just the fan base you have, and you need to hold them accountable publicly. And don't ever reply or quote tweet me again. You literally dogpiled me, and your fans are going to harass me for weeks on end. Dream once again reiterated that he was not a racist, to which they once again demanded a public apology. And unsurprisingly, he caved in, writing on his private, Felt like this was important for me to say. I'm sorry that my reply earlier could be harmful to black members of the community. I completely understand why, and that wasn't my intention at all. I deleted it and will be more careful in the future. I don't want to speak over anyone and always want to do my best to understand and hear people from throughout the community. Even after all this and promoting a thread of black creators, it still wasn't enough. The disgruntled fan ended up releasing all of their conversations. This led to an even larger backlash, with several huge callout posts and even a hashtag canceling him called Dream Out. Many pointed to his previous controversies over past jokes and for misusing African American vernacular. Dream saying that he doesn't believe that his fan base is anti-black threw me off because not only is that something he as a white man can't decide for himself, but also black people have been telling him this constantly. While still being cancelled, even more backlash surrounding the music video emerged. Its notoriety was partly due to the subpar 3D animation. This was, as it turns out, largely the result of mismanagement. The video was ordered on short notice, with production intended to last only 39 days. Its team consisted of Minecraft animators, who were now tasked with a Pixar-esque art style. This led to the uncanny animation and incomplete looking visuals. Rather than an animatic, the storyboards consisted of a black screen with text from Dream himself. This caused complications throughout production, with the team becoming disorganized. In the end, the animation was delayed several times before eventually released, of which many agreed was lackluster. The next day, YouTuber Rebel Taxi released an upload mocking the music video. This caught the attention of one of the animators, who left a lengthy comment expressing their frustrations. 
The reason this video looks so iffy is because of the absolutely ridiculous deadline we got from Dream. We only had a couple weeks to do this, and thus a lot of these shots were all being animated, lighted, and rendered in the last five days, so we just went with what we got. And as mentioned, we are a Minecraft animation team. We've never done something like this before, but Dream insisted it be in this style. He didn't want a single trace of Minecraft in the project, which I find rather weird since he is a Minecraft YouTuber after all. The artist who sculpted the models also aired his grievances. He stated that, because it was Dream, the team was willing to crunch to meet deadlines. These two screenshots became the basis of a massive thread speculating that the gamer had mistreated his animators. While there were clear issues behind the scenes, they would ultimately be refuted by Fire, the project's 16-year-old leader. She would clarify that both of the artists had minimal involvement, and it was still a generally positive experience. Dream also debunked any claims of underpaying or mistreating animators, providing screenshots of their interactions. In the end, while Mask managed to escape from Dream's typical audience, this unfortunately had massive drawbacks. It resulted in him being cancelled, and becoming the laughingstock of social media for several days. Because of this, when the attention finally died down, he quietly deleted the music video on August 23rd, 2021. To this day, he has never acknowledged its removal, though it isn't difficult to imagine why. For most of his career, Dream liked to keep a distance between his lives online and in the real world. For years, nobody knew his real name, where he lived, or even what he looked like. However, despite his best efforts to maintain a separation between those two worlds, a few details inevitably slipped through the cracks. Chief among these was the revelation that Dream had once been in a long-term relationship with a woman named Samantha, or Sam for short. While on the surface this might not seem like a big deal, it would go on to become one of the most damaging bits of drama Dream's public image had ever been exposed to. Sam and Clay had been together since the very beginning of his online career. She had fully supported his goal to become a professional YouTuber, and even provided some of the art used on his channel. While these two seemed to be a power couple on the surface, behind the scenes they were clearly dealing with a plethora of personal issues. Reportedly, Sam suffered from borderline personality disorder. While she had been on medication for it, when they first started dating, she quit taking her pills cold turkey after moving in with Dream. This put an incredible strain on their day-to-day -day lives, as Sam continued experiencing manic episodes. The couple quietly split up not long afterward. Things remained relatively calm for the next few years. Hardcore Dream fans were aware of Sam's experience as she kept an active online presence, but the exact details of their former relationship were kept private. That was until late 2020, when Sam began tweeting allegations of infidelity against her ex-boyfriend. According to her, Dream had been messaging several other women during their time together telling them that Sam was nothing more than a roommate. On top of this, she also claimed that Dream pressured his fans into sending him explicit photographs. Multiple women came forward to corroborate the cheating allegations, all of them giving similar stories about Dream trying to turn them against one another through lies. Sam also provided screenshots of the alleged conversations between her ex and his mistress. However, not everyone was on Sam's side. Internet detectives began digging into her past and uncovered photos which appeared to show her in intimate contact with another man, allegedly taken during the time when she was dating Dream. While this didn't seem to move the needle too much in terms of public opinion either way, it did muddy the waters of the drama. As time went on, Sam's accusations became more and more severe. Not only was she doubling down on the cheating story, but she was now alleging that Dream had physically assaulted her multiple times during their relationship. She claimed that other YouTubers were fully aware of the abuse she suffered and did nothing. It's important to note that throughout all of this, Dream remained quiet. With Sam's previously established poor mental state, perhaps he was hoping that this was all just another episode that would blow over eventually. 
Unfortunately for him, it wasn't. At the beginning of 2021, Dream's real name, face, and home address were doxxed. While there were many people spreading this information around the internet, and the exact identity of the perpetrators remains a mystery, there was one person in particular who stood out from the crowd, Sam. At this point, Dream could no longer remain silent on the subject of his former lover. He posted a twit longer about it, going into the details of his past relationship. He mentioned Sam's support of his channel in the early days, her borderline personality disorder, and the strain it caused on both of them. While he did confirm the rumors that she had cheated on him, he did not mention anything about him cheating on her. According to Dream, he had recently talked to Sam privately about her abuse allegations against him. During these conversations, she reportedly confessed to making the entire thing up. The mentally unwell woman stated that she didn't want people to like her purely due to her association with the famous Minecraft speedrunner. So she made up the story about being a victim in order to make people turn on him and like her more. In spite of this, Dream repeatedly insisted that he did not think these events were a good representation of Sam's true nature. Deep down, he believed that she was a good person and discouraged his fans from sending her hate. To Dream, it was obvious that Sam's mental illness was being exploited by people who wanted to bring him down, and she never would have chosen to spread the docs on her own. Once this twit longer was published, many stands believed that this would be the end of the drama. Sam had quieted down with her allegations, and Dream had clearly said to leave her alone. But as it would soon turn out, things weren't quite finished just yet. Merely a few days after Dream's statement went live, an anonymous Twitter user posted a thread about their experiences with Sam, when she was an adult and they were still a minor. According to them, they had met Sam over Discord a few months prior, and the two quickly forged a close connection. As they continued chatting on a regular basis, Sam suddenly asked the Twitter user to block all of her friends on social media. Despite being confused by this, the young person did as they were told. While this request may seem nonsensical on the surface, Sam's motivation soon became clear. Not only did she repeatedly ask Anonymous to attack people on Twitter who were posting incriminating things about her, but she also constantly trauma-dumped on her underage associate, threatening self-harm on a near-nightly basis. With all contact to Sam's friends cut off, Anonymous was unable to reach out for help. Perhaps unsurprisingly at this point, it also wasn't long until their conversations became intimate. In these explicit messages, Sam appeared to be fully aware of the age gap between herself and her partner. As if that wasn't bad enough, Sam also seemed to brag about emotionally manipulating her audience for views and attention. This only served to cast more doubt upon her abuse allegations against Dream. Now, it's worth noting that these sorts of accounts about Dream's former partner were not new. Back during the initial cheating scandal, a young man called Luke Loves Candy had gone public about a very similar event between Sam and himself when he was just 15 years of age. And more of her victims had reached out to him privately. In fact, Luke was one of the people Sam had asked Anonymous to attack during their time together. But it wasn't until the Twitter thread that the story really gained traction. Many speculated that the recent docs had caused many to reevaluate Sam's past actions. As for Dream, his part in all this remained unclear. Luke claimed that he had spoken to Dream about his experiences when he and Sam were still a couple, and he had done nothing. There was debate about his motivations here. While some believe Dream had willfully chosen to ignore these allegations in order to protect his girlfriend, others proclaim that he was just as much of a victim of her manipulation as everyone else. The true answer is still unknown, as Dream once again stayed silent on the matter. As for Sam, her online presence greatly diminished after this. She disappeared from the internet for several months, clearly wanting to keep a low profile. But it wasn't long until more allegations began to surface that Sam had returned to her old tricks, and was in yet another online relationship with an underage person. As of now, Sam's isolated internet existence means that very little information about her becomes public, so her current activities are unknown. But the discourse around her name lives on. With angry dream stands using their idol's request to leave his ex-girlfriend alone as a war cry against anyone who tries to go after her. Jumping back to the subject of Dream's doxing from 2021, there are several more aspects of the story worth mentioning. 
While nobody knows the exact reason why the information was leaked, there are several theories floating around. What must be understood is that a few days before this event, Dream appeared in Mr. Beast's 2020 YouTube Rewind. Many of his fans believed he was teasing the fact that his long-awaited face reveal would appear in this video. But when it was finally uploaded and Dream's real face was nowhere to be seen, these stands felt betrayed. Adding fuel to the fire were posts by apparent fanatics of the Minecraft YouTuber claiming they had been lied to. While Dream's photos advertising his merch depicted him as a skinny man, the docs revealed he was actually overweight. There was a flood of hateful art depicting his avatar as obese, emphasizing this betrayal. That being said though, there are some who doubt this version of events. They claim that it was all carried out by people who hated Dream and were just pretending to be stands to make the community look bad. Regardless of the motivation behind it, the docs resulted in Dream's personal information being spread around the internet. The Minecraft star's initial response to the situation mainly focused on his ex-girlfriend, saying very little about the photos that were being shared. At the time, all he had to say was, some things were true and others were false. This strategy did not seem to work as people continued circulating around the photo for months, and it slowly became accepted as a fact that it was Dream's real face. Things took an unexpected turn in June when a TikTok user by the name of Jacob TMK posted a video claiming that the young man in the infamous photo was him and that he was actually Dream. He joked that he had been using a voice changer for years when uploading his gaming videos to YouTube and had been maintaining his accounts on both platforms separately all this time. To most, it was clear that the tone of this was sarcastic. However, there were still some who took it at face value, or at least didn't understand the full context. These people believed that, even if Jacob wasn't actually Dream, he was still the person depicted in the photo. This forced the TikToker to upload a follow-up video the next day, clarifying that he was not actually the boy in the picture and had no idea if it was actually Dream or not. Jacob's posts even got noticed by the speedrunner himself, who commented on them and admonished those who would make fun of the boy pictured. Eventually, Dream finally decided to make his own statement on the matter. He completely denied being the person in the photograph and once again denounced people for spreading it around and mocking the person's weight. In addition, he refuted any notion that his stands were responsible for the docs, saying that he had seen nothing but support from his fanbase throughout the entire ordeal. According to Dream, this was all orchestrated by his haters in an attempt to force him into a face reveal, which he refused to do. He followed this up with a joke tweet and left it at that. In the summer of 2021, a mysterious account began circulating in the SMP fanbase. Dream had begun following a newly created profile named Manitreed on several different platforms. Their posts were far and few between, with the user only identifying themselves as Ollie. However, many began to speculate it secretly belonged to Dream. You see, one of their only tweets was a set of images in which they hid their face with the tag MCYouTube. This, alongside the location being set to Florida, led many to presume he was teasing a face reveal to his most dedicated stands. So they dug even further, identifying the brands of his clothes in an attempt to further link him. Dream himself would even point out they wore the exact same gloves. Because of this, despite little to no active online presence, he accumulated over 370,000 followers by the end of the year. Unfortunately for all those stands, these theories would all be deconfirmed in early 2021. That January, Ali announced that he'd begin streaming on Twitch. He would make his first appearance on the server in a brief cameo on George's channel. Mana treed? Wait, what? Stop, stop, stop! It wouldn't be until his own stream the very next day that he cemented himself as a unique individual. Indeed, Manitreed was not a burner account, but instead the gift of a career to an old friend. And this would be explained as he was given a tour around their Minecraft world. It turns out Ollie had known Dream and Sapnap long before they were popular playing the game together for years. This fact itself led to some criticism, with many arguing it was unfair to uplift him over other struggling streamers. You see, their first public interaction was after a tweet in which Dream claimed to be looking for new members. 
he specifically said he would be interviewing for one small, inspiring new creator. Then, hours later, he began promoting Manitreed. This led many to feel betrayed, leading Dream to issue a response on Reddit. Who literally gives a flying fuck? I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. Half the additions to the SMP were random people. I hadn't even called with most of the people that were added before they were added. No one knows anything about this guy, who he is, where he's from, and people still want to make a fuss about it. Just remember that half of your faves got added long before they had a huge name in Minecraft, and Manitree's account were all made in July, but he seems to know a lot about Minecraft and the fandom. Wow, that doesn't add up. It's jealousy pure and simple, and I could care less for criticism on something literally no one but the Dream Team knows anything about. Despite all of this, by the time Ollie began streaming, most appreciated his addition. His account soared to over 450,000 followers, as he finally openly talked to the community. Everything seemed like it was going according to plan, as the community was ecstatic to see where this promising new streamer would go. But then, less than 48 hours later, his entire world fell apart. On January 30th, a burner account was made to publish a series of allegations against Manitreat. They posited his name to not be Ollie, but instead Justin, and accused him of being a known abuser. It states that Clay and Justin had been friends since elementary school, even sharing images purported to be the two as children. This was contrary to the idea that they had known each other through Minecraft. On January 19th, 2021, a lawsuit was filed against Justin for domestic abuse. The case was concluded with a restraining order placed against him. Throughout all of those proceedings, Justin was living at Clay's publicly known address. This both gives background to the creation of Manitreed, but also makes it near impossible that Dream was unaware. Some surmise that after being arrested for violence against his girlfriend, Justin moved in with a gamer who rewarded his childhood friend with a YouTube career. This thread was contentious for several reasons. Many were dubious over how the info was obtained, invading both of the creator's privacies. Others were dismissive of the link between him and Justin, with some even insisting the info on Dream was incorrect. Even if it was false, to prove so required revealing his actual identity. Manitreed would point this out himself in a response later that day. I've never abused a woman, I've never been arrested, I can't believe I even have to say anything. So disgusted and crazy that this is only day one of my streaming experience. Not even sure how people come up with this stuff. To people saying that they can't just take my word, I don't even know what to say. I'm not even being accused. A guy with a random name, date of birth, and location is being said to be me because our chins look similar? I can't even comment on anything without doxing myself. It's depressing. Sorry to anyone that's been put through stress. I would obviously never hit a woman and I'm just dumbfounded about the whole situation. It's very frustrating. My heart goes out to anyone that needs it. This response did little to quell the backlash as he simply begged others to take his word. In fact, it would become even more scrutinized when it appeared on Kiwi Farms the next day. A newly created profile named Lily Freshwater made its first post in the thread. It showed a screenshot of his tweet with the caption, What does everyone think? I think he's telling the truth. However, it was immediately pointed out that his screenshot included the analytics button. This option is only available on tweets the viewer made himself. On February 1st, Dream posted a twit longer responding to the accusations. He announced that he would remove a Manitreed from the server, writing, I would never support anything like that whatsoever or associate myself with anyone that has committed domestic violence or abuse of any kind. This was seemingly a mutual decision, with Manitreed unable to continue due to his anxiety and inability to healthily handle the stress. Interestingly, the post does not clarify whether or not Manitreed and Justin are the same person. Regardless, this would definitively conclude Manitreed's one-day-long streaming career, which ended as spontaneously as it began. Shortly after, all of his accounts were quietly deactivated, with Manitreed never being seen again. In September of 2022, Dream made a surprise appearance in the voice chat of his Discord server. 
He spoke for about an hour, and answered many questions about the future of his content. While most were only of interest to his diehard fans, one in particular would make shockwaves. The anonymous creator had made plans to finally reveal his face. It would play on the mask off TikTok trend, and happen near the end of the month. This would be reiterated weeks later in a community post, where he announced his next upload would be a face reveal. The mask is coming off and George is finally moving to Florida with the Dream Team. It garnered over 200,000 likes, as the public eagerly waited to solve the mystery of his appearance. The next day, Dream teased a photo of himself with his face blocked out. This led to an influx of fan art with their best approximations of what the streamer looked like, and the excitement continued to build as he exposed himself to other creators, including the likes of Hassan Piker, Anthony Padilla, and KSI. With so much interest, one might expect him to feel anxious from the pressure, but he seemed surprisingly confident that the reaction would go smoothly. On October 2nd, Dream tweeted out a single word, TODAY. For as cryptic as it seemed, everyone knew what this meant. The hashtag Dream Face Reveal quickly began trending as hundreds of thousands gathered in anticipation. And then, at exactly 8pm Eastern Time, he posted a new video to his channel. Hi. <laughs> feels, feels so awkward. Talking to a camera for the first time. Hi. My name is Clay otherwise known as Dream Online. His face quickly went viral, becoming the number one trending video on the entire site. It accumulated over 18 million views and 300,000 comments within the first 13 hours. Most on YouTube and among his peers were supportive, noting that he looked completely normal. Many even questioned why he chose to hide his face in the first place, as he had nothing to fear. But others, particularly on Twitter, were not as kind. In response, there was a massive influx of tweets mocking his appearance. They first compared him visually to Shane Dawson and Walt Jr. But then they moved onto cartoons, such as this chart claiming that he was a combination of three different Shrek characters. They took a particular fixation on his jawline and chin, comparing it to the troll face. And a video was made to demonstrate he kept his face at the same angle the entire time. In fact, it got to the point that a second hashtag began trending. Put the mask back on. It's ironic that so many decided to react negatively, as his face reveal had a positive message. At the end, he pointed out that the mask proved anyone could do what he did. In his own words, Dream could have been anyone from anywhere. Upon revealing his face, Dream announced that he'd appear at TwitchCon the next week. Given that this would be his first non-anonymous appearance, suffice to say it was expected to attract quite the crowd. That was in addition to the Dream SMP's already massive pull, gathering thousands of fans every year. But unfortunately for them, TwitchCon 2022 would go down in infamy. Multiple people were injured from a poorly constructed foam pit, with one even suffering a miscarriage, and that incompetence continued to Clay's convention debut. The Dream SMP reunion panel was arranged to take place in the Nom Nom Theater, which had a capacity of only 400. This was egregious compared to events from even just three months prior. When the members of the SMP arrived at TwitchCon Amsterdam, they were given the venue's biggest and brightest stage. The audience shots made it clear a space of this caliber was necessary to accommodate their fan base, and that was apparent before the event began. The hallways and escalators were so packed that fans felt like they were getting crushed. This only worsened as they approached the theater. The lines were more akin to a stampede, as attendees pushed and pulled their way to the front. It became so overwhelming that reportedly multiple people fainted. The crowding also rendered the accessibility line useless. It was surrounded by fans attempting to sneak in. When people in wheelchairs actually arrived, they weren't allowed to enter. This led them to get trapped and were nearly trampled to death. In the end, thousands were turned away as the room quickly reached full capacity. But the issues didn't stop once the panel began. The table wasn't big enough. 
forcing Dream to sit on a chair off the side. He didn't even have his own microphone. Because of this, the team criticized Twitch afterward, with Rambo insisting he'd escalate the issue. As if the panel wasn't bad enough, the group was then confronted with their crazed fans firsthand. Several invaded their personal space, with an individual stealing a creator's water bottle. Another wore artwork depicting two of the YouTubers having homosexual intercourse. But most unsettling are the lengths some took to stalk them. Fans followed Dream to his hotel, preventing him from getting rest in order to take photos. They captioned the selfie, He looked so tired and just wanted to go to his room, but he was so sweet to stop for everyone. It also alleged that a crowd followed fellow creator Carl Jacobs to the bathroom and camped out until he finished. And because things couldn't end there, the next morning Dream posted pictures of himself covered in cuts and bruises. He explained that the injuries were the result of falling out of bed. What should have been a momentous occasion was unfortunately soured by several factors. Much of it wasn't their fault, so much as Twitch cons. But for the first time, he was face to face with the fans who refused to respect their boundaries. Just four days after TwitchCon, a girl by the name of Anastasia went to Twitter and posted some troubling accusations. According to her, Dream had been texting her on the social media platform when he allegedly was aware she was underage. While nothing in the screenshots she provided showed anything inappropriate in their conversations, she claimed things became more explicit when they moved to Snapchat. Anastasia quickly set her account to private once her post began attracting attention, but by that point, it was too late. Hashtag Dream is a Freak started trending on Twitter, and everyone needed to chime in on their thoughts about this matter. And more girls with similar experiences began crawling out of the woodwork. One user by the name of Amanda claimed that Dream had sent her images of his privates when she was just 17 years of age. Much like the first accuser, Amanda said that her conversation with Dream had started innocently on Twitter, before it moved to Snapchat and became explicit. While she was able to provide evidence that she had been in contact with Dream in a series of videos on TikTok, she had no way of proving the more severe allegations. Nevertheless, this was enough to convince a large group of onlookers that their favorite Minecraft YouTuber had engaged in criminal behavior. It wasn't long before Dream responded to the allegations on his private Twitter account. He stated that he was waking up to people making disgusting false allegations for the millionth time. He flatly denied ever sending anything inappropriate to these girls, and expressed disdain for their behavior, which he believed only served to cast more doubt on the stories of quote, actual victims. Amanda's TikTok videos and Dream's tweets were later deleted, and both parties have stated that they are handling the matter behind the scenes through proper legal channels. So there you have the story behind the many controversies of Dream. And it's just a matter of time before he's involved in yet another one. But until then, we'll just have to wait and see. So until next time, thanks for watching.